ake ngikale ngokuzithoba nokubingelela emdenini wakwaqaba abazali bengane yethu untokozo mayenziwe wakaqaba ononkosi umashwabada owashwabadela inkomo nezimpondo ngiphinde futhi ngikhuleke emdenini wakwashezi laphezalwa khona uma kantokozo yena owashona nyakenye umama utholakele shezi odlaba dlaba owadli mhlambi yamadoda umavulane owavula inkandla ivaliwe ngiswela amagama ngeswele namaqhinga anginanganeko angiphethe mzekeliso anginayo nenzumanzumane izinkulungwane zonke eziyisithupha zabafundi banenyuvesi ikakhulukazi laba abahlala ekhaya junction residence abasebenzi bonke neinyunyane zabo ikhansela nobuholi benyuvesi sonke sishaqekile futhi sidumele no vice chancellor of this or any other university should be sentenced to utter the sentences i am about to utter this is the wrong speech at the wrong place at the wrong time occasioned by an act so heinous it will live in infamy in the history of the Tswane University of Technology a few months from now i was supposed to speak at the graduation ceremony of the deceased now consider this 3 days from today that is on saturday the 12th of february 2023 Ndogozo Mayenzi Wekaba, a third year student of the Tswane University of Technology, would have celebrated her 21st birthday. She would probably have taken the time to remember and to reconnect with the spirit of her recently deceased mother, Umama Utolaga Leshez. Ndogozo would have called her beloved grandmother ugogo upetishezi and she would have told the old woman who brought her up how much of a pillar of strength she was to her and she would have told her grandmother how much she loved her and her grandmother in turn would probably have reminded ndogozo that she was an embodiment of the hopes of the entire Kaba and Shezi clan her eyes would have brightened up as she received a birthday congratulatory call from one of her uncles unko singi pile mabuza she would have told her uncle that she was on course to complete her national diploma in integrated communication on record time and why not she was performing excellently in her studies Indeed I am sure she would have shared her dream which she shared with everyone who cared to listen the dream of going all the way to the PhD I imagine Tokozo using the occasion of her birthday to reminisce with her brother Untaganipo himself a recent TUT graduate She might have boasted to him about being an A student that she was and maybe she would have confided in her brother about how she eventually managed to end the toxic relationship she had with her boyfriend She might have shared her new plans of how she wished to turn a new leaf and how completing her national diploma in integrated communication had become her priority for now but alas sometimes during the night of the 1st and the morning of the 2nd of february 2023 the life of ntokozo mayenziwe qaba was cut short 
until the police make us wiser and until the court processes are completed, we will not know the details. But what we know for sure is that Ntogozo Kaba did not die. She was killed. And thus was the name of Ntogozo added to those of Nosikelo Mtebeli Uinene Mkwechana Sehofacho Pule Nosipo Mandeleni Karabo Mukwena Zolile Kumalo Anin Boysen Jesse Hess Rivers Stienkamp and hundreds if not thousands others. The killers of the women are men. Black men, white men, old men, young men, rich men, poor men, powerful men, powerless men. What South African men have in common is neither the national flag nor the national anthem. It's neither the bride prowess nor the beer drinking stance. What distinguishes South African men from their peers worldwide is the brutality with which they keep women in permanent terror and the heartlessness with which they keep killing women. Somewhere in the rotten underbelly of our fraying country, there must be a factory that constantly manufactures killer men and distributes them strategically across every nook and cranny of the land so that no tribe, race, class or geographical locality is without these murderers who masquerade as boyfriends, husbands and uncles. This low intensity war against women is the greatest threat to our democracy and the greatest setback to all our noble developmental goals. We can write up the best national development plans. We can craft the most erudite policies. And we can churn out the cleverest strategies on earth, complete with graphs and tables. We can deploy the most sophisticated technologies and we can dream the loftiest dreams. But as long as we continue to terrorize and kill women and children, all our lofty national plans, all our dreams are a charade and a mirage, and they will come to nothing. Of all the cocktail of violences that characterize South African life at this time, gender-based violence is the most cowardly and the most dastardly. You and I belong to a generation of South Africans who are currently witnessing yet another crime against humanity. Since the German crimes against humanity in Namibia and the Belgian crimes against humanity in the Congo at the turn of the 20th century and the Nazi atrocities of World War II as well as the apartheid crime against humanity as noted by the United Nations, the current carnage of men killing women in this country has become the latest installment in the shameful litany of crimes against humanity. <coughs> More than being witnesses to the crime, our generation, that is you and I, may be accused of aiding and abetting the crime by dint of our acts of omission and commission. Worse still, our generation is in danger of becoming bystanders in this crime scene that is South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a young South African woman has been killed violently and mercilessly. Her name is Ntogozo Mayenziwe Kaba. <coughs> Unless we change our responses and our behaviors as society, the killing of Kaba will not be the last. We therefore may not use this occasion merely to shout our usual slogans. This time around, we must do more than engage in a competition 
of expressions of condemnation, shock, and sadness. Until now, neither shock nor sadness has saved a single life of a woman. Nor will it be enough for all manner of do-gooders to use this occasion to prop up their GBV initiatives, South Africa in general, and the South African higher education sector in particular, is awash with GBV policies, policy frameworks, studies, task teams, reports, and strategies. It is not for lack of strategies that women continue to be murdered by men in our schools, universities, homes, workplaces, and in the streets. It is not for lack of strategies and policies. We must be humble enough to realize that in spite of our best intentions, our best policies, strategies, and initiatives in this country, women continue to be killed by men. Now, will it be enough for us to reduce this to security, to policing, or judicial issues? Consider this. Ntoko Zotaba was not murdered somewhere in the bushes or out in the street. She was murdered in the safest possible place she could have been. Her only home away from home, her room at Ekaya Junction residence. Not even the protection orders which some women keep in their handbags have been able to protect them from being killed. While security arrangements, police agility, and judicial judiciousness have a pivotal role to play in the struggle against GBV, society, customs, culture, and mores have as critical a role to play. Above, between, and below the schools to which we send our children, there is a school as pernicious as it is influential. In that school, boys are taught the language of violence and the art of entitlement. Entitlement to everything, but above all, entitlement to female bodies. That pernicious and ubiquitous school that teaches boys and men how to be violent is also the factory of which I spoke earlier, the factory that manufactures killer men and distributes them strategically across the country. All my reservations about the mere shouting of slogans, the sheer brandishing of strategies, and the wielding of task teams notwithstanding, few universities have taken more enthusiastic heed of the call of government to read higher education of gender-based violence than TUT. Few universities have more thoroughgoing policies against GBV than the Tswane University of Technology. Our Senate has an anti-GBV task team. In collaboration with the SAPS, we have a victim empowerment center right here at Social Ngube campus. We have installed an anti-GBV desk at the Faculty of Arts and Design in Pretoria City. Our Student Affairs Environment has a battery of anti-GBV campaigns and initiatives right across the academic year. Last year, we launched a research chair intended to subject the phenomenon of campus violence to scientific scrutiny. The death of Ndokozo is a tragic and a serious setback for our gallant institutional efforts. It is like the knife that stabbed her stabbed right through all of us and all our efforts. Given the pain in our hearts at this time, we may be tempted to become discouraged. We may even begin to question both our efforts and our intentions in the struggle against GBV. But no, we dare not allow ourselves to be despondent. 
We dare not resort to the familiar refuge of the blame game and finger pointing. For Ntogozo's sake and in her honor, we have no choice but to double down on our push for zero tolerance for GBV. We at TUT have already started to explore various ways in which the memory and the legacy of Ntogozo Kaba can be preserved in ways that will revitalize our commitment to the eradication of gender-based violence. We, are currently, we have currently begun our consultations, and once our consultative processes have been completed, we will make some announcements in this regard. Every killing of a woman, every murder of a female student is nothing but an act of terror intended to beat us into submission so that we accept the logic and the evil of the supremacy of violence against women and children. We, we are being tempted to accept that as a normal part of our life in this country. Violence against women is not inevitable. Violence against women is not a natural disaster. It is a crime. It is a crime systematically and frequently committed by men in a societal culture that not only tolerates the crime, but sometimes encourages it. Now, that is truly what we are up against. For Ntogozo's sake, we dare not let the killers win. For her sake, we as an institution of higher learning, we as a society dare not succumb to the treacherous, cowardly, and debilitating logic of gender-based violence. Kuwe koko shezi ntombendala nani o malume na kuwe baba mtutuzi kaba na wefuti mfuabo kanto gozo wenantlaka nipo musa Nagini nonke bagwa kaba bagwa shezi bagwa mabuza ne itobo zonke siti tutuzelegani agwe thanga onunge thanga Kuntogozo kaba, umfundi wetu, ekameni denyu vesi yonke ye tu yuti, aba fundi, aba sebenzi ne kansela, siti lalango tolo nongosi omufe no nyaulwake, gyabonga.